Hey Gators! Today we are on location in Mr. Liebeck's greenhouse and we have, we have a bit of a problem. We have so a problem. Since the school closure, the greenhouse is up and running as it has been. Um, but I don't have my lovely students here to help me manage and maintain the greenhouse. And you're only allowed here like one day a week, like, right? Yeah, like once a week I come in to check things. Um, we have automated watering. Um, it's climate controlled, so everything's good. But I did notice some aphids. Bugs. We don't like all the bugs. Not all bugs are good. Um, but we brought in the good guys today. Or the good gals. The ladies. The ladies. We brought the ladies in. Um, so, so us your ladies, Mr. Liebeck. <laughs> so I went on to Amazon and I bought... <clears throat> 6,000 ladybugs. 6,000? 6,000. Wow. And so what these ladies are going to do is they're going to clean the plants. And they're going to eat all of those aphids and spider mites and white flies that are plaguing our greenhouse. So some bugs are bad, like aphids, because they eat and ruin our crops. And some... They're good. We like. Not all bugs are bad. So in this episode, we're going to introduce you to Mr. Liebeck's ladies and Mr. Liebeck's worker bees. But that's to come later. So let's... Let's get these ladies out and put them to work. So if you look here on this plant, Mr. Liebeck is showing us... You can see all of those aphids all up that stem. And what happens if we don't control the aphids and we let them go? They basically just take over everything and breed and reproduce and the call and they just infest everything. And they basically just suck all of the juices and life out of the plants. Oh, wow, they're even up under the petals yeah, and it's everything. Pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um, normally I rely on my students to be vigilant and check these every day. Um, but we don't have that luxury. And as you can see, usually they weed the pots <clears throat> and keep everything under control. But since the school closure, it's a little jungly in here. Which the aphids love. Yeah. But it's their time to die. Yes, their, their days are numbered. We brought in the big guns. <laughs> they are eager to come out. Look at all of them. They got lost in the mail. So I think they're 10 days behind when they ship. So they're very hungry and eager to come out. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of shape them. It said to irrigate the plants well. And they're well but irrigated. They, they are well irrigated. And then he so. releases them at the base of the plants. Now, normally it's best to release ladybugs in the evening. In the evening because they fly during the day. And if you release them during the day outside in your gardens, they'll fly away and they won't eat <coughs> Ladybug, your... ladybug fly. Ladybug. <laughs> karaoke, ladybug karaoke. Right. Um, so I'm just gonna put this right there. Um, it looked like quite a few of them did not make it. Um, Which so the packaging <coughs> said is normal because when you order them between um, March and May, these bugs are actually at the end of their life cycle, so they overcompensate and send you lots of extra bugs. But there's quite a few living and they're moving around, so... So we're just going to leave that right there yes. and let them choose their destiny.
feeding on this stem full of aphids. That did not take her very it long. It did not, which is good because we need all the help we can get. <laughs> What a, what a beautiful collection of ladybugs. All over my fingers. Um, quick question. Why don't you just use chemicals? I thought we use pesticides for bugs. Well, um, in most schools you can't use harsh chemicals around schools and things. It's, I think it's illegal or you get in trouble. <laughs> um, so the ladybugs do a really good job of ridding the greenhouse of all the pests. So we, we like to do things um, more natural. And it teaches um, the students that there are other ways to do it that are more naturally friendly and more sustain sustainable. So this would be like if you were going to do um, su sustainable farm practices or even organic because exactly. we don't use pesticides or chemicals. Exactly. Or and um, you can market your plants as natural. All natural. Perfect. Um, is there a name for that kind of pest management? Biological control or integrated pest management is a part of Which is IPM. So if you've ever heard the term IPM, that stands for integrated pest, pest management, management. Yep. which is part of biological control. Biological meaning living versus chemical control. So it looks like I got some aphids on my fingers. And oh, if they you look going super to town. close, you can actually see. Let's see if I can focus that on your finger. They are munching on those aphids that got on my fingers. This is like a discovery documentary where we watch the lion take out a... A baby gazelle? Yes. Oh wow, look at that one. See, Yum. look at it. Like... Where's your hand? There we go. Oh, they're getting it. Live action. You guys are so lucky. In the moment learning. These are going to be some happy bugs in here. They already are. <laughs> For those of you who've never been to Mr. Liebeck's, um facility, it's amazing. And right now we are in his brand new, soon to be orchard. They got it all fenced in for goats and all kinds of things. And he's got something really awesome. A well, mason bee house. A mason bee? What's a mason bee? So a mason bee is a type of bee that they nest in these little holes and they kind of go in, lay an egg, fill it with pollen, and then they cover it with mud. And then they do that over and over and over and over again. And they nest in these tubes. And so early before the school closed down, I ordered some mason bee tubes. And we've got, we got like five of them. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and it looks like they've hatched. If you look really closely, you can see that there's a um, little hole in there. But mason bees are actually much more proficient at pollinating than honeybees are and they don't sting so that's the benefit of having them at the school because I couldn't have stinging bees here because people are allergic there's a liability but mason bees don't sting so they're safe to have around the school so why do you want mason bees in your um, orchard because we are gonna grasser. have raspberries grapes we have the hardy kiwi thing there and we have all these fruit trees that are gonna need pollination to have the best so these bees are gonna feed off of your fruit trees. Yes. Fruit trees. So if you want, we can kind of break open one of these old tubes because they've already hatched, so it's not that big of a deal. Will they come back to this? Not to these ones. But if you look, <clears throat> you can kind of see. Um, there's a cocoon. And that looks like some pollen. And then here's some materials. That they used look, to pack it? Yeah, and if you look, they've hatched and come out. And, the, and then this is just kind of like some mud that they used to kind of wall off. That's why they call them mason bees, because they are little masons and they patch <laughs> their little holes up. So will bees use this nest in the future if you put more <laughs> tubes in there? Um, they will nest right in here. Okay. And what this is, it's rubber band together so that in the fall, you can open it up and inspect them if you needed to. But yes, they'll nest in each of these little holes. Oh, so you just put um, these I, ones yeah, in here ordered, to get it started. I ordered them. Because they had... And, and they come in those tubes. And then I gotcha, put them gotcha. in Gotcha, gotcha. And then they'll return back to use that one. Yes. And they will pollinate your flowers and 
for years. mass production. Yes. Uh, as you guys can see, we are not wearing our white Bugs Don't Like You I, their t-shirts anymore. We, not. we had to do a wardrobe change because we're on to the next part of this episode. Because? Because we have other bugs to talk about. Some some more of the good ones, not the, the type, of, but more like the hero bugs, like our ladybugs. They're the superstars of the insect world. Yes, um, but also while we were traveling, we picked up a hitchhiker. Hi. <laughs> Who are you? Lane. Lane? Who's Lane, Mr. Liveback? Lane is my nephew. <laughs> Why are you with us? Why did we find you? What are you doing? I'm helping you guys with beekeeping. With beekeeping? So Mr. Liebeck and Lane have actually had a super busy afternoon. What all have you guys been doing? So we went up to Bees and the Burbs and they are a local beekeeping supply store and they sell honey and other bee related things. Um, and we picked up uh, my nuke that I pre-ordered a couple weeks ago. They called this morning and said it was in. What's a nuke? A nuke is a nuclear colony of honeybees. And it's like a little cardboard box thing and it has um, five frames and it has a queen and some bees in it and it's kind of like a starter instant colony and we're gonna put that into my big colony that I bought. You know how to do all of that? Well, we got some help from an expert and he actually was kind enough to let me film his little orientation. So we're gonna pause and show and, you that. And watch that, yeah. Now. So we are at Bees and the Herbs and we are picking up our nuke. Just put it together, you can look over there and they're getting out. So I recommend doing a net, okay? It, it keeps most of them, still some of them even squeeze through that netting, but it, it keeps a lot more in than out. So okay. When you first get home, put this directly on top of the hive. Let me make sure these guys aren't doing bees too if they are, we'll get you both at the same time. Pause yeah. for one When you second. first get home, set your box directly on top of the hive where it's located. Open up this little door, okay, and let them forage for at least a half hour or so. The longer they are, then the less you'll have to fight with when you get ready to move them, okay? So when you get ready to move them, just put them right next to the hive. all the frames out of your hive except for three of them okay when you get ready to move it ideally this whole thing just comes over but you can't do that in one shot so when you get ready to move it and I do like to say the clock is ticking the brood's 90 to 95 degrees the longer you're messing around you're just hurting the babies okay so this is, I mean glance for the queen but this is not the time for an inspection okay get it moved on over exactly the way they came out Then you, of course, you can glance, you know, but just don't be flipping the frames around and stuff. And then uh, put the rest of your frames in. Then you'll usually have a little bit of a gap there, especially with new equipment. Just center it up. Take the box, there's going to be a lot of bees in it. Give it a little whack. Then you can lay it on its side. The bees are going to follow the queen in. Uh, I had one customer tell me the bees kept going back to the box, and later on she found the queen in the cavity there. I've done thousands of these. I've never had that happen, but since the customer said that, I, I do mention it, okay? So there's that, and then I highly recommend a pollen patty, queen excluder, feeder. These feeders, uh, do you have this sort of feeder? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So about three gallons of syrup. Are you gonna need syrup today? I've got some. You got some? Okay. So they can suck down this three gallons in about three days sometimes, especially when they're first starting out. Okay, so I'll just check on them. Enough. I mean, go out there after a couple days, just look if you need it, fill it up again. And we do have sugar here, or syrup here. <coughs> I had a guy, uh, Last, at the end of the season, he was doing the math because he's buying sugar at Costco. He said it was cheaper to buy it already pre-mixed for me. Oh. Yeah, because just, by, especially right now, I'm hearing a lot of people are having a hard time finding sugar. Because this hive will probably suck down three five-gallon buckets worth. Okay. Which is about a 50-pound bag of sugar. Okay. Okay, so if you do need it, we've got it available. I'm not trying to oversell it. But just, oh, no, I, no, I no. Sugar's hard to get a hold of is what I'm Good hearing, to know, so. good to know. Okay, so put the lid on. You're just doing the one box. Once they're using eight of these ten frames, okay, being active, you can add the second box, move the feeding operation up, and continue to feed until the second box is 80% full. Okay. Okay? And then by then, you should be able to stop feeding for a little bit. You can put your supers on, but keep an eye on it, because especially after the blackberry, sometimes there can be a bit of a lull, 
and you went from you know 20,000 bees to 80,000 bees, they can start sucking up their groceries real quick. So just be prepared to feed again, okay. especially in the fall. Okay, good okay. to know. All right, any questions? I think I'm good. Okay. So Would now that Mr. Liebeck and Lane were taught everything that they need to know, we're going to go see how they do on putting together their own beehive. Correct. Where are we going? We are going to Grandma's house. To Grandmother's house we go. Over the hill and through the woods, literally. <laughs> literally. You can literally see it. We're going through some woods. Mm, we are. We are. In just a second, at least. Yes. But uh, we, as always, we will update you when we get there and... Stay tuned. Lane, what are you doing? I'm putting my beekeeping suit on. Your bee What is a beekeeping suit for? You put it on so you don't get stung by bees. Oh. Okay, what is this and what are you doing? It is the smoker. The smoker. The smoker. So, does it make smoke? How does it See work? For yourself. <laughs> so, you put wood pellets in there. And I'm burning some old receipts. I keep a lot. And what you want to do is create a good smoke so that when you're working with the bees, you can put smoke on them because the smoke masks the pheromones and that's how they communicate. So if you smoke them, they can't communicate with each other, so they're calm and you can work with them without getting stung like crazy. Great. So, We're hoping for 0% stinging today. Cor correct. <laughs> get stung I'm gonna probably cuss so you'll have to do a little a bleeps. little bleep I'm gonna stand in the smoke so apparently this netting didn't work all that well judging by all of the bees floating around Mr. Lebeck had some escapee bees The guy said the nuke boxes were pretty, um, on me. Oh, how lovely. I'm just being careful. You don't want to hurt any of our little friends here. Um, yeah, we're friends. Um, and what the guy told me in the video, well, if you watch the video, you'd know. Um, That's okay. Highlight anyways. To put it on top of the hive where you want them to be for a little while. And undo this cork. Yes. And he said you just want them to orient themselves for like 20 to 30 minutes. So that they get a, a lay of the land. And that's what we're gonna do now? We wait. We wait. Maybe we'll try to get some of these bees that are in my truck over to here. To we drift. Have like a thousand of them escape. And how many bees did you order? Um, I'm not really sure how much is in a nuke, but my package bees that died, that it was like 10,000 that died. So give or take. So probably a lot more than that, honestly. Get a shot of them like coming out. Yeah, this is the guy in the white suit. Oh, I forget. If you want me to get close up stuff, I can film too.
If you guys are honey fans, this is what it takes. And I like a good peanut butter and honey sandwich, so. I don't like inspect. I said just kind of let them be. <laughs> let them be. I was totally filming that. Beat on the top of your head. Is that? <laughs> yep, totally. There totally is. Lane's right. <laughs> but can you look at the bees? Well, he, he said, to, um, he said, don't dilly dally when you're putting them in because it's kind of cold out for them. And he said, you want to just let them be as least stressed as possible. So he said, just kind of get them in as quickly as you can. They're remarkably calm. There's they one are. on your arm and like one, now there's three on you. Lane. One went off. There's, Turn around. For you. There's one on your head. head. I'm filming it right now so you can look later. How long do you think it's been? Okay, Lane, while we wait for 20 to 30 minutes, can you tell me about your bee suit? It's white because bees are not afraid of white. Are there colors bees are afraid of? Yes. What colors? Brown and black. Why? Because that reminds them of bears. Oh. The more you know. So it's gonna go. Can I take my gloves off first? No. Watch. Just hold Watch. it. Watch. Okay. Just don't cover up that. Good one. He's on it. Okay, get in there. Okay, we are gonna install these guys. There's gonna be a lot of them in here. Wow. Yes, there's quite a lot. Getting that lane? Yep. Do you see the queen? Nope. I'm going to get more closer. Just going to give them a little smoke to kind of ease them out of the way so they're not in the way when we're trying to remove these. It's kind of... Notice how they're dissipating. Okay. We are just gonna grab our...
I take a couple of these out. It's fun doing the BP cartoon. Isn't it fun? Getting a little. Okay. I think we have. I know I see that. Um, okay, let's get them a pollen patty. What's a pollen patty? It is food for bees to eat. I can get it. I haven't been stung yet. <laughs> but I did make Lane do the filming up close. <laughs> he did a good job. Have you done that out somehow? I don't know. It's good, Lane. Okay. <laughs> now we will put this on top. I can tell That's you. That's a good spot for it. I like this spot. It is. If you do that, it's not perfect. It's got a little squishy. Okay. What's that? That's their liquid food. Their liquid what? Liquid food. It's oh, food. Like you said Mr. Liquid Food. Okay, they drink that? Yep. Oh my god, one drowned it. <laughs> Save it. Oh, it's fine, Lane. It's fine. <laughs> oh my God, Lane! Here, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. He got it. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay, let's get the Lane. Lid you're on a bee it. farmer Before and a bee saver. <laughs> okay. I got both of them. Let's see them. Oh, the other one's a little bit closer. And you saved him from the liquid food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Got him. Okay. Oh, I think that dude's stung. Did he sting it? Nope. Bees all over me. Save one, all the others think they're in trouble. <laughs> oh, Lane. Get it all the cutest. Me. Lane, on a scale of one to ten, how much do you like being a bee farmer? Ten. Okay, Lane. Yep. What do bee farm why do we farm bees? What do they make? Honey. Honey. Uh -huh. Why do they make honey? For us to eat. And for them to eat? Uh-huh. Very good. So are you all done now? Uh-huh. You guys How was your first beekeeping? Good. I think you're I think you're all clean, buddy. He's got one on his oh, 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 we got missed one. There. Now go around the other side and you can change. Oh! There's one on your back. Got it. Go. We finished putting the bees in their hive. We wanted zero bee stings and I didn't get stung. I got stung once. I got stung zero times. Nice. But Mr. Leibig did purposely pick up a bee with his bare hand. Bare hand and that, that 
that was my bad. Poor B, rest in peace. <laughs> Anyways, we hope you liked our video don't and forget, learned something. Yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Because our, our videos, videos are, are the, the bee's, bee's knees. knees. Till next time.